Remember when I said this? So I really want to start getting hair extensions again this year. Nara Smith voice. So that's exactly what I got started on. So that's exactly what I got started on. I genuinely could not stop thinking about hair extensions. I knew that I had to get them at some point in this year because with every single passing month, I just kept losing whatever confidence I had left in my hair. So in case you can't tell, today I'm gonna go get hair extensions, but they're not any normal hair extension. And I'm very, very, very excited, not only about experiencing this, but like sharing it with people because I feel like more people need to know about this. I have had pretty much every single type of hair extension you can name and think of, starting with clip-ins, which I started wearing when I was 17 years old. I bought from Luxie Hair. This is a weft. This weft has clips in it right now, but you could take the clips off and then like sew it into your head. Not actual head, your hair. Imagine, that would be horrifying. And we'll be right back with the rest of the video in two minutes. So for now, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Songmont. Songmont's ever versatile Luna bag, this time in a vegan caramel color, is the newest bag in my lineup for spring, which not only is her leather vegan and plush, and her hardware electroplated and fade resistant, but impressively, she's made from recycled ocean plastic and waste. How they turn non-degradable marine litter into a piece you would see at Galerie Lafayette in Paris is absolutely beyond me, but I respect it and I'm here for it. I gravitate towards Luna whenever I go out for a full day of activities because although over the shoulder is my favorite way to wear her, she can also be shaped into four different looks with a detachable handle and strap. If you're trying to go from a day to night look, all you have to do is take off the strap and connect the clasps together. And boom, she's a clutch. Then loop that strap through and she's even more unique than you thought possible. And if your day is so busy that you can't pay any mind to her, I'm sure she wouldn't take it personally. You can install the longer strap and wear her crossbody. But wait, do you guys remember my first Luna bag made of milled fine calfskin leather in the most perfect shade of jade I have maybe ever seen? Unless like what we traditionally know to be true about affordable bags, i.e. the loose shape and look worse with age, Luna here ages more than gracefully as she develops a glossy warm look to her leather that'll be unique to every bag's life. Which of all the designer handbags that I own, I can say rarely ever happens and is just a testament to the quality of Luna's leather. And as a girl who usually only buys black or cream designer bags because well, it's assumed that those colors would match every outfit, I love how this pistachio jade color adds visual interest to my outfits and actually never clashes. So thanks. Luna for showing me that a beautiful leather grain plus a gorgeous shade of green equals one of my favorite everyday bags for decades. Sorry for the jump scare. After my deep dive on Songmont's monogram motif collection last month, I couldn't help but feel like I missed out on this Mont Hobo bag, which not only have hobo bags officially made a comeback in the world of fashion, but the delicate and light variation of Songmont's pattern, which displays mountains, pine trees, clouds, and rain, plus the functional size of the bag kind of made me feel like I just discovered my new everyday bag. She's more petite than my usual large drippy tote, which I wear every single day, but she's still still large enough to fit everything I could need to casually run errands or attend castings around the city. And the elephant ear pockets on both sides, which allow you to slip your phone in for easy access, only make a busy life feel a little bit more effortless. She's made of a sustainable material that's a mix of French dew-redded linen and TPU, which is lightweight yet resistant to water, oils, greases, and solvents, so I know that there is nothing that she wouldn't survive. Thank you guys for listening, and let's get back to the video. I have had every single type of hair extensions, and with every single one, I could tell that this was not the right method for me. And my hair type because my hair is really I always say my hair is really silky but that sounds like I'm complimenting myself I'm not it's really thin and really slippery so nothing will actually grip on so when I had sewed in wefts and when I had tapes and even when I had those like micro bead little extensions every single time within weeks they would just start slipping off of my head and for the record, it is certainly not the fault of the people that installed them because they are like as pro as they get. It's just literally my fault. So I went on Google Maps and I tried to find a local person to install hair extensions. Initially, what I wanted was to get this sewed back in, which is again, not an optimal method, but I'm kind of like just desperate at this point. Lo and behold, I go on Google Maps and the closest salon that does extensions to me does Korean braid extensions. I look at that and I'm like, you mean to tell me there's another K-beauty thing that I have yet to fall in love with? So anyways, I was doing some research and this technique is apparently super popular in Korea, also super affordable in Korea. Every single K-pop star obviously has the Korean braid extensions. And if you're asking me, I think the coolest thing about this is that there's no glue 
Everything is braided gently onto your hair and then tied with a string. It says no glue, no pliers, no heat, no hair loss during removal. The weight is separated into your whole head, which means that there's no strain on your scalp and no hair falls out during shower. The hair can also be reused for like a year, which most other hair extension techniques, you have to actually throw the hair out after because it's no longer good, which is so wasteful. So anyways, I read about it and then I literally could not stop thinking about these Korean braid extensions. And so I messaged the salon that was really close to me and I said, hi, can I please come in for a consultation? Oh my gosh, by the way, there is this other technique. I don't know who else has seen this, but there's a person on Instagram that does like hair extensions with a UV light, like basically a nail lamp. Somebody even commented it's gel X extensions for your hair and like how true. Basically what they do is they like glue the actual strand of hair to your hair with this like nail glue and then a UV light and then it's supposed to stay for I don't know how long but despite that being a very cool technology I don't think that it's superior to this one. A question that a lot of people ask about hair extensions won't it damage your hair isn't it gonna cause your hair to fall out? I can confidently tell you we don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. That my hair will fall out and get damaged regardless literally at the same rate. Basically, it's a risk I'm willing to take so happily, so let's go. I also failed to mention the fact that I did already have a consultation last week and they had to special order me the color of hair that would match my dyed hair color. So this should take a couple of hours. For me, it has taken as much as like five hours, but hopefully this will only take two hours. So this is Rain, who's going to be doing my hair extensions today. Hello. So I guess people would be wondering like how long does it last? So this kind of extension is going to last uh, two months, around two months to a month and a half. After two months you will feel like it's not going to fail, but it's going to grow. So it's going to have the regrowth and it's going to be long here. So you're going to feel it's not tight to hang in the hair. But other than that, there's nothing to bother with. And then Rain got straight to work and started braiding my hair. So not that I've received any formal training on this, nor has anyone really explained this process to me in detail, but this is what happens from what I've gathered. She takes a few strands of your hair and separates that in two. Then she twists the two strands and then braids the extensions in with that, ties it off with a string, cuts it, rinse and repeat 20 times, and then you're done. By the way, I'm recording this audio like a month later, so I can confidently at this point say that I've had zero problems with this and this might just be the best technique ever, in my experience. Then Rain cut the hair, even though I do wish she kind of left it a little bit longer. But I guess that's my fault because I told her that I mostly wanted it for volume. My advice, don't cut them too short or don't cut them pretty much at all. You're gonna want mermaid hair, trust me. I love the feeling after you get hair extensions and then you walk around and you catch yourself in the mirror and you're like, that's me. Like, I look good. So if anybody's wondering, she mixed two different colors of extensions together. I mean, I think you could even see it in the video that she was kind of like tying two of them together. I just have this type of hair color that apparently not very many Korean manufacturers of hair extensions make. By the way, another huge reason why I wanted hair extensions is because when I have them, I can style my hair once and then it'll last me three or four days. If I don't have hair extensions, my hair cannot hold any style. So Rain, the extension stylist, and I obviously spent the entire time just talking about everything there. And one of the topics of conversation was my boyfriend. And I was texting him just now and telling him this whole story. And then I'm like, why don't I just vlog about this? Cause I always do this and texting him pictures or like telling him stories and I'm like, this is why I don't post, is because I give him all my good brain thoughts. I should be giving them to you guys. Anyways, Rain, if you're watching this, which you probably will be eventually, thank you. I literally feel nothing on my head. Like it has pretty much no weight. Of course, I'm gonna give it some time to like really conclude how I feel about these extensions. Okay, so anyways, um, Rain was asking me about me and my boyfriend. And she was like, how'd you guys meet? Like, blah, blah, blah. First, I told her that we're long distance. Then I told her that we've been long distance for like five years. And then she's like, well, how'd you guys meet? And like, obviously, if you say you're long distance, most people probably think that you two are like an online relationship and you guys have never actually met. Or maybe you have met, but like because of online, I told her the story that we met in the seventh grade. I fell in love with him on the first date. I literally saw him 
in the back of the school. I was a child back then. I've never felt love or like be in a relationship. I've never wanted any of that. Was not expecting this, trying to like manifest it in my little 13 year old mind. I still genuinely believe that like what I felt towards him was, was love. Like, and I really don't know how to explain that. Maybe it wasn't, maybe you can say that like, I don't know, childish emotions can fool you, but every single thing that I wrote in my journal about how I feel about him, still to me in my adult brain, sounds and feels like love, but anyway, that's not the point, okay? It's sweet though, isn't it? I told her all this and she was like, wow. Like, she was like flabbergasted, like, holy, you must really love him. Like, you know, you're in this relationship for love. Wow. And I'm like, what do you mean? And like, she is obviously so right. To me in my brain, that is like, if I was gonna be in a relationship, obviously that is the only kind of relationship I would ever wanna be in. I went home and I was talking to my boyfriend about this and I was like, you know what? I feel like I should be really grateful and I'm very lucky to be able to marry or be in a relationship for love. Like literally not because I have to survive, not because I'm trying to leave and escape my country and marriage is the only thing that will get me out of poverty. I think I'm very lucky and I think I didn't really take in how fortunate I am in life to have been born at the time that I was born in with the rights that I have as a woman, to have the mother that I had that raised me to be independent. Thank you.